What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, dentists, coaches, you name it, stop just trading time for dollars and shift from a one-to-one client work to a one-to-many. Uh, Rise25 is an exclusive accountability and group coaching program, and who want to scale up and it's run by myself and by my founder co-founder john corcoran we bring together like-minded entrepreneurs from different client serving backgrounds a lot of times people love ben the um we have a dream product ladder which is a download on our rise 25 site and it basically helps any business kind of design their business on one sheet of paper and see untapped revenue potential there so a lot of people go there download your free dream product ladder And I am excited to introduce today's guest. We have Ben Arneberg, and he co-founded two quickly growing seven-figure e-commerce companies, Willow and Everett and CubeFit. And what's what's even more impressive, Ben, as you know, because you live this, but he did this all (laughs) by working full while he was working full time in the United States Air Force, helping to develop some cutting-edge space technology. So, Ben, thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks so much, Jeremy. It's a pleasure to be here. So obviously there needs to be that game plan. So are there certain levers to get the traffic to Amazon or is it just a simple thing like putting the, making sure it's, it's the buy now is going over to Amazon? What, what things should someone be thinking about doing? So great question. I actually wrote a blog post on that. The only blog post on product fuel that I have written so far because I got way too busy, but I kind of talked about like the top seven steps you should do when trying to, you know, go from, an awesome Kickstarter crowdfunding campaign to Amazon, um, and yeah, it's 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 several you know simple steps like um, taking advantage of the social proof by having your Amazon listing really tell people like, hey, this thing did great on Kickstarter. Having your video up, redirecting your link on the Kickstarter page to either Amazon or mm. a landing page, where then shoot people yeah. in the coupon, and then it's targeting keywords because at the end of the day, Amazon only works if you can get your product ranking for those extremely high volume keywords. Right. So. Yeah, so it doesn't work for all products, but if your product is a fit, there can be massive opportunity. Yeah, I mean, you point out two things on this on the post, which is the two. I mean, we don't really know the algorithm, but I mean, am, you know, reviews are huge, right, with ranking, and then sales mm-hmm. velocity is huge, or pro, and product ranking keywords. So the two you mentioned, which probably people don't think about doing, is emailing all your backers and having them leave a review on Amazon, right? That's it, that's big. Yeah, it, that's so. There's a company right now I'm helping. They're called Wilcox Boots. Amazing boots. They just did this uh, Kickstarter campaign. We were not just, but like a year or so ago, it went really well. And we had them send out an email to their backers. They got 150 reviews in like one day. <laughs> Amazing. And because and everyone loves the product. So instant social proof from that. So that's it's a that's again why yeah. I, I love this Kickstarter to Amazon or to your yeah. store. Because it's, yeah. It's low-hanging shortcuts. fruit that mm-hmm. they would not have even, some people wouldn't even think of that produces huge results for them. And it just means writing one email. Right. Yep. So, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So check it out. Productfuel.io. And then there's, it's like top five secrets to a successful, uh, su- successfully sell your crowdfunding product on Amazon. Um, so Ben, we talked about researching products and especially for Kickstarter. Um, what about, do you do it differently than if it's just launching on your site in Amazon than Kickstarter? You know, uh, the, cause you do the, mm-hmm. um, you know, Google trends, so you do the Amazon sales, you do some testing and ads. Is there a different process for if you're just launching it on your site in Amazon than Kickstarter? Or is it the same? A uh, different launch process or validation? Yeah, a uh, different validation process for new product. Because not uh, every product you release on Kickstarter, you know, some you're you're just yeah, releasing on Amazon and yourself. Yeah, that that's fair. Yeah. Um, so I think for Kickstarter, it's does it have the you're kind of looking for that a little bit of a wow factor. You know, like is it instant gratification? Like someone's like season. Like I love that because some of our products are a little more utilitarian and boring, yeah. and I I just know it, it would not do well at all on Kickstarter. Yeah. But it's still validated because we can still see 
strong demand and we know it's a better product that we'll launch it. Yeah. Um, but I, and I think that's kind of where like the art, you know, to the science kind of part comes in is you kind of got to give your best guess and, you know, use some intuition. And sometimes, you know, we're so wrong, but that's why you do the validation because at the end of the day, yeah. it's all about, is it the right product or not? You can do all the right steps, but it's either the right product or it's not. Mm-hmm. Talk about launching. So I know you have like a 72 step process for launching. <laughs> what are some of the most important <laughs> things when launching a product? Uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and a lot of that is following our best practices as, as, just, as far as just like ensuring product quality, you know, dealing with all the logistics, the inspections. Um, and then once it's getting ready uh, to actually go live, uh, you know, on our website and on Amazon. Um, but we try to, we have our own kind of uh, VIP group that we'll give the product to, to start kind of testing out, getting mm. feedback on it. And then uh, it's also important on Amazon specifically to get a lot of initial exposure quickly. So we'll use um, some launch sites that can kind of help get our product out there for uh, lower price, but then it can really help it climb the keyword rankings fast. And then it's, you know, getting, just trying to drive as much traffic as you can. So we're driving it from our own list, from our Facebook page, from other people's launch services, and then turning on Amazon ads and just trying to like, you know, send as much to the listing at once as you can. But on top of that, you need to make sure that you're in a highly converting state. So you need to have amazing images, good copy, you know, all the, I guess, basic e-commerce um, stuff, doing really good keyword research to know what you even mm-hmm. care about. Um, and uh, what was the biggest mistake you were making? I mean, there's a long list now, but when you were starting, you've built this out over time. What's mm-hmm. the big, biggest mistake you were making and you feel other people are making that when you changed made the biggest difference? Like, I don't know, if it, I'm not saying it is, but like, for example, like actually just putting high quality images and images that are people using the product as opposed to just the product. Yeah. So what have been the biggest levers as far as the mistakes you were making and once you put it in place, it produced the most results for you? Yeah, that's a really good question. I, so I, I'd say, yeah, maybe one of the big ones actually is I think a lot of people overlook images. Like, you know, retail is changing rapidly. A lot of stores are going bankrupt and just the whole nature of commerce is shifting. But there's something a lot different about buying it on your computer than going to the store and be able to interact with it, turn it around. So what people forget is like the customer wants to know, like, how does this product actually work? What does it look like? So what we found is, and this has been developing over time, but by putting as many lifestyle images as possible and just really helping try to bring the customer into like the story of like, how is your product being used? What are the different you know features? Like for example, one of our teapots, we'll show it um, steeping in the tea. We'll show it, you know, maybe being microwave at one point, showing kind of the different like ways that you can use it, having a really attractive model, pouring it with their friends, just trying to tie the consumer into that story. We find that really helps conversions and makes someone a lot more likely to buy versus seven yeah. different images, uh, you know, that just show it from various angles on a white background. Like no one, that doesn't really help the consumer in any way. Yeah. But yeah, there's I guess a lot of other tips I could think of, but that's maybe one of the one of the big ones that I think kind of gets overlooked, and a lot of people don't want to spend money on images because it does cost a lot, but it's just an investment that pays dividends if you do it right. Yeah, I mean, one thing that I've seen you guys do on your site is just the animated GIF um, that most people aren't doing. I mean, the, even the Kickstarter, the TerraMat example, like yeah, you know, if you said oh calf stretch. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool, calf stretch. But then if you show like an animated GIF of someone actually doing a calf stretch, it's, it means so much more. It's so it's so much better. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah, love like, that you guys do that. It's in demo. Yeah. Yep. And same with, you know, video. You know, very beneficial as well. So, Ben, um, we talked a lot about, and for, I think for productfield.io, I, I'm, I'm going to put my vote in iteration. Um, you know, what's interesting is as a veteran, uh, you know, someone, it's really interesting how people transitioning after their service, what do they do? You know what mm. I mean? There's probably a big, big population of like, they're not sure, like transitioning into, so civilianhood or whatever you call it. You know, it's interesting. Probably a lot of those people have ideas. Um, it's like you could even get so far in niching down into helping those people, those people have product ideas while they're in service develop them so when they get out they have like a sustainable business waiting for them so uh, yeah. I, don't know, I think about that for your your product fuel.io as a uh, as a really niched server yeah you know what I mean? that's a really I, I really like that so, because i am passionate about helping, uh, helping other vets and there are a few services that do that but i think to really help empower yeah the inventor so um yeah uh, think about that for a second i, I was just that. thinking in 
And I want to talk about, I know we have a couple minutes, you have another meeting coming up, but um, I don't like to leave it just on the up. I like to hear about some of the challenges, you know what I mean? Because yeah. the reality is there's ups and downs to this. Um, what have been some of the, the challenges or the, the down pieces? Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely have been a lot of those. You know, entrepreneurship's a roller coaster. And I think it's trying to, you know, not get too far down when, when things aren't going well. Um, so what's been, uh, uh, I guess, I like to yeah, end uh, it in Spurred Insider with um, what's been a low moment business wise and then what's mm -hmm. been a, like a super proud moment for you? Yeah, so I think a low moment is, or, or just, you know, a difficulty is having so much going on that you start feeling burned out or like you can do all the systemizing you want, but it's just, it's a constant process. And right now I've a little bit of a little too much that I can chew. We actually launched a third business, kind of replicating some of what we're doing. Um, but I'm starting to feel kind of like split with, between two many different things. So I'm, I'm wanting to, I think, prune some of that down. And then I think as you do that, you start to, um, I know sometimes I'll just be a little short with people or, um, you know, just like feeling from the pressure and patient. And, and so I think it's kind of trying to deal with, you know, the quote busyness and like yeah. the one thing says you need to embrace the chaos that ensues by just doing your major things because then there's gonna be a lot of you little stuff that's kind of floating out there like oh I didn't clear out my inbox today you know not the end of the world if you don't do that but yeah. I still feel that pressure as a yeah. perfectionist to get it done um, it kind of you feel like sometimes it's leaked into your your personal or social in social situations f fantastic point yep I, I'm I'm really trying hard right now to kind of keep it compartmentalized like when I go home it you know at six from from the we work I'm I'm leaving work behind I'm not talking about it and I'm really trying to do a better job with that on weekends because I see a lot of entrepreneurs that yeah. reach into their life it's done that to me for the last six months to a year and I'm, I'm kind of done with it so yeah yeah I wish we had more time because I want to hear because your spouse is obviously part of the business so yeah it, it's, that's even harder to cut out yeah, you know what? I can actually my next meeting. I can be like ten minutes late. So I, let me. Yeah, we can we can keep chatting if if you want. To yeah, you. for sure. Um, because then it's like, okay, how do you even shut things off? And how do you your your spouse is part of the business? That's I would think really tough to navigate. So if you need to send a message, go ahead and do your thing. But uh, I'd love to explore that a little bit because I'm sure people have family or friends or spouses in the business with them and how you navigate that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's um, it's a double-edged sword. It's awesome being able to do it with your spouse on one hand because, you know, you're doing this together. You know, you know each other really well. We happen to complement each other in a lot of ways um, in the business. Um, she's good at things I'm terrible at and vice versa. But it's also a big challenge because now, you know, for a while, actually, I was kind of giving her tasks almost. Like I had a trailer board and I was putting cards on her board and I quickly learned – that is a really bad idea to treat your wife like an employee. Learn the hard way. But what is so she that say? was um, well, just like she's just you know, I can tell just like kind of getting you know upset that I was telling her what to do, and then would just be like super late on deadlines, and you know there's just a lot of stress from that. And, I, and you know I had this moment where I was like, you know, this is not like it's not even worth having a business that's going to succeed if it means your marriage is going to suffer. And so we ended up hiring a market manager that. I could then, you know, treat as an employee and then allow her to do what she wanted. But I think mm. it's important to have clear. You just called the market manager, like, put this on her trailer board. No, I'm just sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, no. So surely you no, she, not me. No. Yeah. no, yeah, she, he, he does her task now that I was doing her. Yeah, that would be fun. You have someone else do it because then she won't say no. Look, I just hired a person to put stuff on her trailer board. That's <laughs> Can't get mad at her. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think what, what we're really, really trying to do, and I know you know you you think about this a lot, is how can you have a healthy you know, um, you know marriage while running the businesses? Is I'm trying to keep things very compartmented. So if we go out, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to have one awesome date night a week where we don't talk about business or problem solve. Trying to not talk about business on weekends. Um, but it, it's it's a it's a work in progress. And I kind of had my eyes open up even just a few months ago, where I was just so busy, you know, in survival mode, so to speak, running these businesses while being in the Air Force. Finally got out of the Air Force, had breathing room, but found out all my habits had been established at that point. It's like, oh crap! So I kind of had like a a rude awakening. And thankfully, my wife was very gracious, but kind of helped me understand, like, hey, you are like being way too consumed by these businesses. Mm. Um, and we, I, you know, something I actually would highly recommend is see a marriage counselor like I, I don't think there's no shame in that I think it's very healthy and I think it should be a regular part of people's lives to see a counselor because they find 
um, things that you, you 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 don't know about. You you know, we all have um, blind spots. So we've done that yeah. a few times. That's incredibly life giving. Hmm. Build a talk. What did you learn from that? Oh man, I I learned a well. I, I learned a lot. I, I learned that I, I can be um, there. I can be selfish, and um, I learned that uh, you know. I think I was making this excuse for like, oh, I gotta provide for the family. I gotta gotta provide for us, um, but was kind of just using that to fuel my own ambition and, and taking a step back. It's like, okay, you know, God's blessed us to the point where we're doing this full time. We can you know have more than enough money to eat. You know, buy a house, etc. Now I'm just kind of pursuing a number like, oh, seven figures isn't enough. Let's go for eight figures. Let's go for, you know, and it's like, that's not worth it. You know, like if you just pursue success for success sake, like it, it's so empty. So I, it kind of helped me realize like, that's what I was doing. Like I was no longer just trying to provide for our family. I was just on a runaway, you know, uh, you know success <laughs> rant, I guess you could say. So, um, yeah, that, that was pretty huge. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. We'll let your wife hear that so she knows you're selfish and you get extra points <laughs> for admitting that. Uh, yes, Lee, I'm selfish too. Um, my wife is a clinical psychologist, so uh, yes, I, you know there is a lot of uh, time and place for for people to get the seek, and it makes perfect sense. Like people have business coaches, then oftentimes we don't do coaching for our some of our relationships. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. That, and actually, on that note, what I'll say too is, I, I what I find is, if I'm constantly filling my head with business this, business that, then that's all I think about. Mm. And part of the shift has been like, hey, I'm going to start also learning about like how do you become, you know, become an have an awesome husband. How do you have an awesome marriage? Because it it does take work. And just like you know, building a business, you kind of have to build your marriage. So at least put some thought into it. You can't just expect it to happen. You know, but I didn't realize that until the last you know few months, really concretely. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. You know, yeah, thanks for sharing that, Ben, because that's obviously very personal. Um, so on the the last thing, last question, Ben, what's been the, one of the proudest moments so far for you? So I'm actually trying to work on not being prideful. So mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> dangerous question. No. So I, I guess what I'll say is I'm. Maybe I'll, I'll say grateful moments. Okay, and, grateful. And grateful is good. But, um, I'm really grateful. And I guess, you know, I'm proud of the hard work that my wife did, I did, and then our, our team will never to kind of take this dream of, you know, after Hilo and everything, and I was just discouraged. But I loved entrepreneurship and, you know, really wanting to do it full time. And, you know, praying like, God, would you let me be a full time entrepreneur? And then, you know, he answered it. And here, you know, May 22nd, 2017, I was able to leave the Air Force be a full-time entrepreneur and I, you know, I really hope I can do it for the rest of my life. And uh, that was just like an amazing, like, I, didn't, I didn't really think that was possible that I could be running businesses on, on my own like that, especially um, fairly soon. But I'm just really grateful that, um, yeah, that God blessed it. And that, yeah. you know, we all worked hard to, to make it happen. So yeah, thanks for sharing Ben. And where should we point people towards online? Um, I know I mentioned, mentioned productfuel.io. Any other places we should point people towards to find out more about you and what you're doing? Uh, yeah, product fuel I can't pronounce it. Product fuel .io would be good. And especially, I didn't mention this, but I'm really interested in becoming potentially an investor in small, up and coming innovative brands. So I'd love to connect with innovative brands or inventors. And then also anyone who maybe is an investor and kind of how you know, they do that because I'm looking to learn more about this area. So pridefuel.io, but then also um, willowandeverett.com mm -hmm. is our high-end kitchen brand. And then cubefit.com is uh, the healthy office um, brand. Where should should they connect with you if they have interest on pridefuel.io or where should we send people uh, for that? Yeah, there's. Uh, yeah. I, I think I have a, I have a contact okay. form in there. Uh, you, you know, there's uh, several, uh, I think on that one, I just put a Gmail one, ben.arnenberg.gmail.com, okay. cool. but you can reach me at like ben at willownever.com or add me on LinkedIn. Okay. Ben, I want to be the first one to thank you. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for breaking down all these processes so thoroughly. I really appreciate it. People should check out productfuel.io, Will and Everett or CubeFit. It's been awesome. Hey, thanks so much, Jeremy. It's been an honor. Hope to see you at uh, Rising... Uh, Rise 25, exactly. Yeah, Rise 25. It sounds awesome. So awesome. I'd love to come. Cool. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.